Good morning and welcome to this time of worship together when we thank God for the harvest and we acknowledge that we have care of his creation. Uh, I have two notices uh, before our worship begins. Uh, one from Maisie to say the Blytheswood boxes should be brought to church ready for collection by the 23rd of October. And a second notice, we are going to be serving Christmas lunch to people from the town on Christmas Day. If anybody would like to be part of the volunteer team, please see Myra. Our opening words this morning, the world and all that is in it belong to God. The earth and all who lives on it are his. Let us dedicate our offering to God. Loving Heavenly Father, accept all the gifts that have been brought today. We bring our money to support and grow the work of your kingdom here in Selkirk. Bless each contribution here and given through the bank so that the work can continue and to grow. We ask your blessing on the food and the money given to support the work of the food bank. Be with those who receive the food and help them to find hope through the care of others and to be aware of your love for each of them. Amen. For today's service, the church has been decorated to remind us of God's beauty and provision for us all, not just here in Selkirk, but for everyone all around the world. So let us see and give thanks. Let us see the symbols of the harvest, gifts that God has created and that his sun and rain have nurtured. Let us see the whole of the planet, God's creation put into our care. Let us see the harvest crops for cornfields, for oats and wheat, for barley and rye, providing food for us and for animals. Let us see the roots and seeds of vegetables and fruits, all providing food to put on our tables. Let us see the flowers from our gardens and fields, providing beauty and sources of pollen for the bees and insects. And finally, let us see the seeds which will be sown to provide next year's crops, seeds so full of potential and promise, seeds which hold the hopes of farmers all around the world that there will be a harvest next year. Harvest time is a time to give thanks and to look forward to the changing seasons and the hope of the year to come. So let us join together and sing our first hymn, which is hymn number 231 in the hymn book, For the Fruits of All Creation.
it is good to so, so, show our gratitude, but as we look out from here, it is impossible to be unaware of the effects of human activity jeopardizing the balance of the natural world on which we rely. So let us share in our prayers of thanks, our prayers of confession, and the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. We praise you, God, for the diversity of your creation. We are ma <coughs> amazed by the variety of your work. The earth is full of your creatures, all made by you. But in our self-centeredness, we have neglected to serve the natural world. We have polluted the land, the waters, and the air, destroying delicate habitats and accelerating the loss of species. We know that creation waits for us to change. We confess our overuse of transportation, the need for speed overriding the healing of the earth. We confess our greed in the consumption of food and energy, too often exhausting and poisoning the land in poorer countries of the world. We confess our use of detergents and cosmetics and synthetic clothes whose unseen microbeads run into streams and oceans and enter the food chain. We confess our rubbish and piles of materials just thrown away, wasting the world's resources. We confess our unfaithfulness, not loving you with our whole heart and soul and mind, and not loving our neighbors as ourselves. Heavenly Father, forgive us and strengthen our resolve to do better. We ask for forgiveness. We ask for the gift of remembering. And we ask for the strength to change. Amen. Amen. The Lord's Prayer. <clears throat> Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. A reading is from Genesis 1, verses 24 to 31, which can be found on page 4 of the Pew Bibles. Then God commanded, Let the earth produce all kinds of animal life, domestic and wild, large and small. And it was done. So God made them all, and he was pleased with what he saw. Then God said, and now we will make human beings. They will be like us and resemble us. They will have power over the fish, the birds, and all animals, domestic and wild, large and small. So God created human beings, making them to be like himself. He created them male and female, blessed them, and said, Have many children so that your descendants will live all over the earth and bring it under their control. I am putting you in charge of the fish, the birds, and all the wild animals. I have provided all kinds of grain and all kinds of fruit for you to eat. But for all the wild animals and for all the birds, I have provided grass and leafy plants for food, and it was done. God looked at everything he had made, and he was very pleased. Evening passed, and morning came. That was the sixth day. Amen. Thank you. <clears throat> when I started thinking about the service, I was increasingly aware of how any news that we see and read 
is so sad. It's really depressing. And we are blinded to the beautiful, positive world which God has placed us in. It's very easy to get bogged down in negativity, and it's hard to hear the news. The younger members of our family actually avoid it, and I suspect that they're not alone. The problems are too large, too big a burden to carry, but as Christians, we are to be people of hope, to be bringers of hope to this broken world. Where can we find hope for the world? Where can we find hope for the future generations? With this question in mind, I challenged each member of our eco-congregation to share with us where they find their hope. A long time ago, before once upon a time, there was God, just God. God's love. God loved Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But God wanted more love. So, God made everything from nothing. He made the earth, sun, moon, stars, land, sea, plants, fishes, animals, and people. And God loved everything. God loves everything. God made everything from nothing. Jesus chose 12 unlikely, rather ordinary men and taught them about God's love under Roman occupation. Through those 12 unlikely, rather ordinary men, Jesus started the church. Over 2,000 years later, that church is full of unlikely, rather ordinary men and women responding to God's love. God's love is what gives us hope. There have been famines, wars and disasters before, but God will use us, unlikely, rather ordinary people, and carry us through. Our next hymn is one with which you may be not so familiar, uh, so I would ask Rod to play the tune all the way through. It's the hymn, This Is My Father's World. <laughs>
This is my father's world. The birds their carols raise in the rustling grass I hear him pass. He speaks to me everywhere. I want to share with you an experience I had this year when I really felt God speaking to me, giving me hope for our planet, his creation. To our eyes, this young tree is dead. The roots are no longer secure in the ground. It's dead. How can such a dead tree produce new growth? Yet new growth can be seen. This was our walk at the back of Lauder. I go out every Wednesday with a friend who's been struggling with life. We have great fun together. And this day, stumbling on a path we'd never walked on before, we found this dead tree. You can see the new growth in it. How can that be? The roots are out the water. It started to make me think of the dark places I have been when everything seemed too overwhelming. Failed exams, family illness, stressful workloads, anxiety, depression. And now in 2022, events through the world seem overwhelming. So much suffering. Yet God showed me hope that Wednesday afternoon in May. Amongst the gloom of a destroyed woodland from Storm Arwen, glancing at this dead tree, I couldn't believe my eyes when I saw all the new shoots growing out of it. He speaks to us everywhere. I thought of all the struggles I've had in my life, and I've often felt like this struck down tree. And then my thoughts turned to Jesus dying on the cross and how this brought us new life. Yes, this fallen tree was definitely a message of hope. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. <clears throat> Mo reminds us that nature has the ability to regenerate and recover if we give it time and space. We're going to sing again now hymn number 149, Let All Creation Dance. <laughs> As the seasons turn here, the earth turns. 
Harvests are being brought in across the globe. New seeds are planted. Farmers have dreams and hopes for a good harvest, to be able to feed their families and to make a living. The decisions we make affect those around the world. We hold their dreams and their hopes in our hearts as we make the decisions on what we buy and how we live. Everything we do has an impact on the changing climate. We cannot pretend we do not know. We cannot turn a blind eye to the impact our decisions have on future generations. Will we be able to look them in the eye and say, we knew, but it was too difficult to change? So many images from recent news items have stayed in the memory, and it is impossible not to feel responsible. The natural balance that was relied on in the past has gone. Our generation caused that. I caused that. We're now going to share in our prayers for others, which are being read by Iona McNeil from Ashkirk. Loving God, where hope is drowning in despair, where joy is dampened by oppression, we remember many waters cannot quench love, neither can floods drown it. When mockery and derision drag people down, when things held dear are scorned and belittled, we remember many waters cannot quench love, neither can floods drown it. When discipleship leads to imprisonment or torture, when Christians are killed for their faith, we remember. Many waters cannot quench love, neither can floods drown it. When cruelty, injustice and intolerance diminish, when, like Jesus, we are called to carry out our cross, we remember. Many waters cannot quench love, neither can floods drown it. God who pours good things into, over and through this world and its people, when our hearts turn the flow of your gifts to a trickle, take our hearts by the hand and lead us back to your path. Teach us to walk lightly, sharing all we have. Today, as we gather to celebrate harvest, we are mindful that there are other places on our planet where hunger came instead, where crops have been seriously affected by extreme weather. We pray for those whose hopes of harvest have been shattered. The most vulnerable suffer first and most severely. Millions will die, each one loved by you and family to us. God, in your mercy, Unite us in love and unite us in hope. Amen. Harvest Sunday, creation in our care. Where do I find hope? It used to be that the regularly changing seasons, summer and winter, springtime and harvest, gave us security and hope that all was well with the world. But now we know from other countries that even the seasons are no longer so dependable. Maybe we notice it less in this country, but we didn't used to get such torrential rain and such frequent flooding. So where do I find hope in an unstable world? Picture yourself sitting on a rock by a river. The rock is solid, unmovable. The river is always moving, but always the same, living water. Which of these gives me hope 
in our changing world. Rock, rock of ages, standing on the rock. But actually, rocks don't stay the same over the millennia. They have shifted and melted and reformed. Water. Water in many parts of the world is no longer reliable. Millions of people are currently suffering from droughts or floods. So neither the solid rock nor the living water is something I can pin my hope on. The Bible tells us there will be a new heaven and a new earth, but I'm not very sure what that means. I think I need to find hope elsewhere, not on this earth. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' love. I need to base my hope on something or someone not subject to the changing world we live in, whether it is the changing climate, the changes in society, or the changes in our church. I'm basing my hope on God's love, the same yesterday, today, and forever. May God bless you with hope. We sing, <coughs> sing again hymn number 243, touch the earth lightly, use the earth gently, and Rod is anxious that we are aware that in verse 2 there is a key change. So those of you who were singing flat in the first verse will be right in the second. <laughs> Just to make clear, the three, three of the verses are in a major key. like that hymn where there's a, a sad verse and three happy verses. I think that kind of reflects a lot of what those of us that have been asked to talk about hope feel. It's not easy to cultivate hope in our turbulent world. I often feel despondent. 
You might not think that. That's maybe not what shows on the outside, but often I feel despondent and helpless when I think about the issues that face us, whether it's political extremism, economic turmoil, societal breakdown, pollution, loss of diversity, the nuclear threat, and the lack of political will to address climate doom gets me down. Like most folk, I guess, I just want to bury my head in the sand and ignore the worrying news. Won't happen here. Won't happen to me. So, where do I find positive hope? Well, it's God's world, but God doesn't usually ride in and take direct action. He has done that 2,000 years ago, and that should be enough for us. You go and do likewise, he said. I might be wrong, but I don't think God is going to change the laws of physics to prevent climate catastrophe if we continue to pump carbon dioxide and other gases into the atmosphere. Generally speaking, God chooses mainly to work through individuals who are tuned in to his concerns. And that should be us in his church. But he also often works through others, and that gives me hope. For example, I follow an online briefing called The Planet, regular articles from a chap called Alexander Verbeek, who's a retired Dutch diplomat who lives in Canada. Yep, there he is. Alex provides challenging information about global issues, but he also combines that with beautiful photographs of the world that God has given us. He puts those two things side by side, and I think we have to do that too. Here's a quote from his last article that I read this week. I focus on making people aware of these complex challenges, but combine them with providing hope for solutions. Not just to ensure that you'll sleep well tonight, there are indeed reasons for hope. And then he explains some of those. But he says, the stakes are high, the problems are complex, and the narrow path to a peaceful and happy future can only be walked once. There is no room for dramatic failures. I don't think Alex Verbeek is a Christian or a practicing Christian that I know of, but it's interesting that he speaks about the narrow path, and that's what Jesus tells us to follow too. But sometimes I just get down because what I'm doing just feel like makes such a little impact. But hope comes from seeing and hearing that many others share those concerns, like Greta Thunberg, who I'm sure you're all aware of, who's inspiring thousands, maybe millions of young people to keep on campaigning for politicians to take notice and make changes. When she started, it was just her. But now, every Friday, right across the globe, young people continue to protest and press for change. They don't get much press coverage anymore, but they're committed and they're not going to give up. I think there's three examples there from different parts of the world. And that cheers me to think there are young people in Africa, India, China, right across the world, who every Friday are standing outside their school with a placard and saying to the politicians, what are you going to do? These give me hope. And it's not just young people, but there are people like us. We heard that from Jane and Jack, didn't we? God chose ordinary folk, just folk like us, unlikely people. But there are people like us, including Christian leaders, who are willing to protest and even risk arrest to protest publicly about the need for policy change. I don't know about you. I don't know if I'm quite ready to stand in the street and get arrested. But I sometimes feel I'm getting close to that point when I see the huge needs of the world. It gives me hope that there are people willing to do that. But hope also comes from the fact that there are people in power 
who are starting to take these concerns seriously. We see increasing numbers of green politicians. We see global leaders like Christiana Figueres, who led the COP21 um, campaign, um, United Nations campaign, and Antonio Gutierrez, who's the current head of United Nations. They are both speaking out to the most powerful people in the world about the need to take action about climate change. I could also have included Pope Francis. You may remember he brought out a letter to the church five or six years ago um, telling us that we must take these things seriously. We must look after God's world. He's just brought out, or he, not he's brought out, but a, a, a film has just come out, I think, in the last week or two called The Letter. So if you get a chance to see that, I would suggest you do. It's about how Pope Francis has, has encouraged and inspired people to take action. A big source of hope for me is a lady called Catherine Hayhoe. She's a climate scientist who's also a Christian and an influencer. She brought out a book a couple of years ago called Saving Us, subtitled A Case for Hope and Helping in a Divided World. She says, we don't need to save the world. The world will look after itself. It's the human race that's in danger and we need to take action. But she always speaks positively in the face of disturbing scientific evidence. All of these people give me hope. And hope has to lead to action. It means, if I say I have hope, it means I have to keep on challenging myself, my own lifestyle. Keep on doing what I can do locally. Using my time and energy to make sustainable Selkirk work and hoping that that can make a difference. And I keep on pestering my MP to take climate change seriously. Maybe it's about time I wrote him another letter. I'm sure it's at least a month since the last one. Maybe you can do the same too. So, hope for me, I suppose, means facing up to the problems and challenges, not burying my head in the sand. Taking action where I can, knowing that so many others across the world, people of faith, people of no faith, are also hearing the world's cry of pain and taking action. It is God's world. We humans are given responsibility to care for it. Even if it feels like we're in a tiny minority against the big powers in the world, if we take climate action, we know we are working with God, not against him. He doesn't want the world to be spoiled. We don't know whether our actions will succeed, but we have hope because we are not alone and we know that we are doing what is right and what is good, and that brings hope. Thank you. <clears throat> and so we are here, called by God to be part of his plan, to be caretakers of his planet, and to remember the hopes of the whole world. We are called to watch, to see what is happening, to gain knowledge, and to see the signs of hope in the world around us. Once we have seen, we need to respond, to join others who are working for the same thing, however small we feel our contribution may be. We know that we are doing God's will, and he will honour it. So we watch, and then we weave our response into our lives. Doing better, being more responsible, so that it becomes part of our makeup, part of who we are, individually and together. Once we have watched and woven, then we can witness to others that there is hope for the world, that God is working his purpose out as year succeeds to year. So let us remember and act 
upon these three words, to watch, to weave, and to witness. Our closing hymn this morning is hymn number 251, I, the Lord of Sea and Sky, and I will ask you at the end of it to remain standing as we say a blessing to each other. Let us say this blessing to each other. May the love of the faithful creator, the peace of the wounded healer, the joy of the challenging spirit, the hope of the three in one, surround and encourage us today, tomorrow, and forever. Amen.